in for profile. And as I promised you last week, this is part two of my conversation with May Wayne Marshall. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen here. He spoke about the theory, getting into the theory of music, uh, in addition to all that he had done before. I want to hear about that. But let me just refresh you as we go, go along. Glory to God, that song, oh my goodness. It is really a prayer, and it's influencing so many people. Older people, people who are not so old, children, people who are in school. And I want you to really sit back and listen, not just only to the words, but for me, the orchestration. And uh, remember that Natural High is a group that helped Wayne to make that the product that it really is. And the other uh, musicians who worked on that and his dear friend, Minister, we're going to come back. I said, DJ, that's dating me. This is Profile. We continue our conversation. <laughs> So I have seen a few breadfruit seasons. So um, Minister Ryan Ma's contribution to glory to God, I call it DJing, but he's ministering, okay? Just get that straight. <laughs> when <laughs> but, has it ever been referred to as DJ? Um, in the 70s, would have uh, your DJ as tune. Oh no, well, I just thought it was so obvious that he was preaching. <laughs> <laughs> obvious to whom? Not to me, <laughs> but of course I knew he was preaching. But he's in the DJ style, that's what I would have called it. Well, he is a DJ, he's there actually you go. a gospel. So I'm not that bad no, then, that Wayne. Bad. You tapped into something. Exactly. You tapped into something. Okay, then <laughs> and I could have done the arrangement. <laughs> Talk to me about, you mentioned at the end of part one last week that you had gone into the theory of music. What do yes. you mean? Oh gosh, music theory was calling me. So the instruments were calling me. And I was, I became a nerd. I just dedicated all my time, all my, it's almost like I had to do it or else I couldn't sleep. Sometimes I'd be up at 3.30 in the morning reading my phone, just trying to get that final bit of, of music theory, you know, and then what ended up happening is that I found God in the music. Yes, because the music has a thing where it revolves around the root, the root key, the root note, the tonic. So here it is, you go on a journey and you come back to the root. So it's just like us as human beings, we're on a journey with, with, with the aim to go back to the root. So I found the philosophy in the music. So what are you doing? You're YouTubing this thing or you have yes, a teacher? Yes, yes, YouTube. I, I, because sometimes the teachers, they're, they're thinking how them can maximize the earnings. So they will string out lessons and not tell you the true secrets. But uh, on YouTube now, people just want the, the likes and people want the subscribers. So they tell you all of the little tr tricks and, and tips that you need to know instantly. And did the, that propel you into playing instruments? Absolutely. I play the guitar now and I play the piano as well. Never before now? N no, never before now. I mean, I spent the last like seven, eight years just specializing and going into it, you know. And as I say, it's just like, it, I can, just to be practical about it, when I say the root, you, you go, da, 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 da. Da, da, that's the da, root. Da, 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 da. It, it's nothing without the, the resolution mm -hmm. back to the root note. Mm -hmm. So I looked at that and I saw the message that God was sending through the music. And then I looked over into geometry and saw the message that God sends through the geometry. And then I pushed even further and got to sacred geometry. And this is literally creation based on shapes based on circles and straight lines. And you actually, when you practice sacred geometry, you actually begin to see depth out of just the flat paper. Your when you eyes. say sacred geometry, what do you mean? It's um, geometry that is based on metaphysics. So God would be the first dot that you make, then you make a circle around that and then different circles and different circles. Once you start seeing a certain amount of circles there, you start joining all the midpoints and then now every mathematical equation, all the platonic solids are in there. Every Come on, you got a one for math? No, because oh. I did not like maths <laughs> until I realized that it's God maths, not man maths. So we need to tell the picnic them, says God present these, these, these things are bigger than man. So it's our divine right to appreciate them mm -hmm. and love them. And then you look into nature then, and then you see God again. You see maths again. Absolutely. You see geometry again. So then what that started doing is giving me a holistic approach to my knowledge and acknowledgement of God. It's amazing because 
you've come to this place where you've gone into theory. And I think you had gone to Michael Bennett at one point mm -hmm. in your career mm -hmm. and came upon a different kind of theory that he exposed you to. Yes, What did Mikey Bennett? Well, Mikey Bennett is a songwriter, he's a producer, yes. he's a musician, he was once a Grafton. member of Home T4. Yes, but Grafton what happened Studios. to you and Mikey Bennett? Well, we had this grand idea that we were going to bus. So I was in we Sixth who? Farm. I was in Sixth Farm and my friend Jesse Golding said, Marshall, we're ready for the world, you know. You mean Stephen Golding's son? Jesse yes. Golding? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I, I, I said, I said, um, Jesse, let's go, let's go. And he said, I know Mikey Bennett and we can go there and I'm sure he's <laughs> going to be thrilled by our talent. So I go into Mikey Bennett's studio you know, and I say, all right, no, ready, we in our uniform and thing. And, and he, there was some, I had my thing, my song, well set, you know, to sing for him. But then for some reason, there's a change of events. He decided that I should sing what was playing in the studio. So I don't know this song from nowhere. I just hear this singer in the studio. So he said, sing back that way here. So me go da 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 whatever, trying to sing it as best as I could. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, no, man, you're not ready yet, man. You're not ready yet, man. You need to do some voice training, man, and something and come back, man. And it was like a dagger to the heart because me, I say, yo, I'm ready for bus. No, no more on bus because at, at, at this time now, we, we have like even Ricardo Gardner as my schoolmate who I live the dream. So we are saying, reggae oh, boys. Yes, mm -hmm. reggae boys, and get called up by Rene Simois and big superstar. And we are saying, oh, we can be star now. So, what did you do when Mikey Bennett said that to you? Well, actually, I followed his advice, like any good student would. So, I, I, I went to a Georgia Slifer, a, a Cuban lady, um, who, who did voice training. I did voice training with her. And, you feel like nothing now go on, feel like nothing now happen, but all you're doing is da 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 I just follow in the keyboard, because she's not a very vocal person, but she just say, okay, do you follow me, da 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 And then, every time you go back to the studio, them say, boy, you sound so, yo. The engineer would have said, boy, my shit, I'm not telling a lie, the thing sound away like, yo, where I go on? And then the man, they say, well, look like the device training at work. And then now, it's funny how things come back full circle, because, me and Mikey Bennett are like brethren now. You so, can trust Mikey to tell you the truth. Absolutely. But there was a time in my, my immaturity when I was just like, all I'm on <laughs> Mikey Bennett are the worst man on earth. But then, but still, I followed his wisdom. I did follow his wisdom. And me and that man become brethren now. Like, I call him, he's one of my mentors, he's one of my you guides. You bounce things off Mikey, you would have to, because he's just, and he's so giving. He's so giving and, and he, he always has time for, for the younger ones, mm -hmm. always. And as a matter of fact, Mikey was, uh, was also one who has been a part of my spiritual journey. There was a time when we had this prayer, Bible study type of thing at Temple of Light where I would where I'd go. He invited me there and I went there and I was just like, oh, this is right up my alley. Very open-minded, very um, question or, you know, like you ask the questions and we're, we're looking for, for wisdom from great books, not just the Bible, but wisdom from great writers because I truly believe that God is still here, still inspiring, still sending his prophets, still sending his teachers with his sacred knowledge. Wayne Marshall is my guest. It's part two and I hope that you're learning and you're being inspired by him and you're um, yourself looking at perhaps what you need to do with your life. Grafton Studios is the Mikey Bennett we're talking about in Vineyard Town, okay? And he used to have a Thursday evening reasoning there, you know, once a month and then it stopped. Wow. But we'll be back as we continue our conversation with Wayne Marshall getting into his business. <laughs> Wayne Marshall is my guest and we're continuing our conversation. You know, uh, last week I spoke about you going to the print vice principal after your two weeks in fifth form and say, put me back to fourth form. What was that all about? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I just kind of put things into perspective and I knew I was not ready for CXC that year. I knew I wasn't ready to dedicate the, 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 the time, you know, and I knew I didn't do enough in the fourth form year and I'd have to be playing catch up. So I just, me and two other of my friends, very close friends, m met and we made the conscious decision that we we're going to visit the vice principal's office. I went to her, I said, Miss Rob, please understand my request. 
and please honor it. I would like to go back to Ford Farm. I'm not ready for CXC. And she, she, she literally was at a loss for words <laughs> because <laughs> it was a proposal that she's never heard before. And she said, well, wow, this is new. <laughs> Give me some time to process it. And then she called us back in and said, okay, okay. What did your parents say? Wow, I, I, I don't even remember deliberating with them and telling them about all of this, but you know, when a, 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 a kid makes a decision like that, I think parents just think, who am I to, right. to block this, this conscious decision? You know, and... Uh, so having repeated fourth form, and then mm -hmm. we eventually get to fifth form, you think you weren't ready for CXC then. Were you ready after you repeated fourth form? How did you do? I wasn't ready, but I... <laughs> <laughs> I made myself ready. I made myself ready. How did you do with the results? I did well. I got four ones and three twos. Yes. Which was, which was impressive. If my, you had gone on the year when you were put there first, how do you think you would have done? I'd have flunk out. I, I doubt. I mean, you, who knows? Who mm. knows? But I don't think I was, I was you mentally prepared. You just weren't prepared. ready. And you knew. And that was a very mature approach to have taken, you yeah, know. Yeah. After fifth form, what did Wayne Marshall, or you were Wayne Mitchell, beg your pardon, before you became Wayne Marshall? Right, right. Well, after fifth form, no, I just, it was all roads to music. I just felt the musical bug. And it was just music, music, music. I was writing every day. So in sixth form, I was disengaged from school. And I was just thinking, okay, school, um, the next song, the next, you know, I was, by that time I was at King Jammy's studio. I moved um, from Barbican to, to Hope Pastures in 1988. And that, that was three gates down from King Jammy's. So from that time, from I was like 10, 11, I was at King Jammy's studio. 10, 11? So, yeah, man. Your parents didn't know? Not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it was like mainly in the summers. So I would go, to, I would say, okay, mom, I'm going down to the King House which was three on uh, and, and Avenue, yes. number three. So I just go down there and tell her that I was there, but yeah. then I'd jump into King Jammy's car and we'd all go down to, to, to Waterhouse, down to the studio. Ah. And then I was just like a fly on the wall, observing and just basking in the process of music. And it was like the dance hall hub. It was the academy of reggae music, basically, you know, hardcore music. So I was there. I used to see the great Sanchez, Bushman, Caperton, you name it. They were all there, their pasture, and I was able to see the, the little details and the process that they would put into making the music. And I would hear them do big songs there and then hear them on the, road, on the radio. And then I was like, oh, I was there. <laughs> I was there when that song was made. And that, that, that to me was just everything. And I just thought, I want to be a part of this process. I what, want to be this. What was your first recording? My first recording was, was a, a song named Story Don't Tell and the Bada Bada Redeem. That was War 21, some young selectors on King Jammy Sound who then went on to be producers, starting to make rhythms. So we're all the same age and we're all feeding off of each other. They were breaking out into music at the same time as me, basically. Yeah, man, it was exciting times, though. You did a number of collaborations in your um, career as a recording artist. Yeah. Who are some of them you worked with? Oh, gosh, I've worked with... You worked with Sean Paul? Yes, I've worked with Sean Paul. I, I, I actually got, have a um, platinum-selling plaque at home. Um, I did, did a feature on his Trinity album. That was big time for me. That was, you know, when you do something like that as a young artist, you think, wow, I want one of these for myself. You know, or the dream is actually real. Like, I'm a successful artist. Like, yeah. look at this. Look at my wall, you know? Yeah. So it was, served as great inspiration. Of course, Bone to Kill, I can't speak of my musical career without a bounty killer because he was the King Jammy's main artist while I was a kid. So he, we used to idolize him and look up to him and, you know, I remember Trev, which is King Jammy's son, coming home and saying, yo, my father find the baddest artist named Bounty Killer. And I said, what? But yo, T42 cassette, I make we hear them, no man. So bring on the cassette, and, and then from that, I was just like, wow, this artist is going to change the game. He might go bust, the world are gonna know him, and it was like a prophecy mm. that, that as little kids, we see it happen, we see it manifest, and then eventually, you know, Bounty would know us just by virtue of being around, around them, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then we got old enough now where we could write songs, and then I wrote this song, and I said. Trev, you know, so forgot to bounty with this, it bounty with I do that tune in a collaboration. There was a song named When the Smoke Clears. And that was the first collaboration that me and Bounty did. And after that, it was just the beginning of a lifelong mentorship, 
you know, You're friendship. still in touch with Bounty Killer? Yes, man. Yes, man. You also had collaborations with the Marleys, some of the Marleys. Yes, of course. Um, Damien Marley played, plays, play, is playing, plays a big role in my career. He produces for me. Um, my last album, True Colors, was produced by Damien Marley. Um, the first album was Martial Law. Martial Law, that's VP mm -hmm, Records. Mm -hmm. That was from J King Jammy's mm -hmm. days. And then oh, True now, Colors is the one True that Colors, um, Damien, Damien is involved in. Produced, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And Damien is just, a, 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 what can I say, he's a workaholic, he's a perfectionist. He's gifted and he's, he's um, inherited so much but still works for his own. Which is It's good. almost like him, Nana, but no, Nana, straight. He, does, he works so hard. And um, I remember Damien gave me a book. It was a Quincy Jones biography. And basically he gave me and said, if you know a good feel, you read this and give me back my book. <laughs> and within two days I read it and it just changed my life. And that was kind of one of the catalysts for me yearning for more in okay. music because I realized I was nowhere. I was a novice. But then I thought, hmm, I'm a novice, but I built a career. And part of that was a Grammy that um, there was some association with Damien Malia. Well, yes, I, 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 we, we He's gotten the Grammy Award yes. now for, for his latest album, Stony Hill, which I'm a part of. Yeah. I'm a writer on there, so the, in, inadvertently, I, you, I have a Grammy. Yay! You know, so congratulations. Another thing that says, okay, one more step to you winning one for yourself. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Wayne Marshall is my guest. When we come back, we will continue this conversation. Thank you for joining and listening and enjoying and being inspired. <laughs> So we're in the final segment of a two-part series of an interview with Wayne Marshall. Mm -hmm. I'm just going on straight. Mm -hmm. Glacier Robinson, a number of dramatic things happened in your life, yes. and that was one of them. Talk to me. Glacier, I remember Assassin Sasko said to me, I'm doing a song with Glacier Robinson tomorrow. I want you to be there. So I said, Glacier Robinson, hmm, who is that? But then uh, uh, when I reached to the studio, she she had already left like about five minutes before. So then, as soon as I get to the studio now, I we don't usually have on the TV in the studio, me and Sasko. But for some reason, the TV was on. I looked up and I said, Sasko, isn't that Glacier Robinson? Because the name came across. This is really just hard talk with with Ian Boyne, Glacier Robinson. We're catching this now, and then watching now, to take take off the mute now, cause you know and watching it and just listening to the story and just hearing. And as I start, thought, wow, I just miss Glacier. And here she's on the TV with Ian Boyne tell, talking about this testimony that is just so riveting, you know? And then eventually now, two weeks later, Ian Boyne is, is sick and then Ian Boyne passes. Then I think to myself, wow, did Glacier get to speak to Ian? You know, because it was, you know, it, her thing was a very near death experience. I know. So I, I, I thought to myself, no, I need, I want to talk to Glacier. And then there was something telling me, link Glacier, link Glacier. But then I didn't want to go to Assassin because he just did a song with her and it kind of looked like me, I try for, you mm -hmm. know. But then don't get me wrong, he, I know he's cool like that. But then I, I just kind of, I said to Ryan Mark, you know, I have a number for Glacier. And he said, no. And so I kind of left it, you know, there. But there was something telling me, link Glacier Robinson. So eventually now I, I buck up and uh, I have the YVs and I, I'm sent to a tailor to, to do some, some fitting. And the tailor says, this is like within a week. And, and the tailor says to me the next day after we've done the work, uh, you, you know Glacier Robinson? <laughs> and I say, whoa, and I feel the goosebumps and everything. And, then I, and I'm, to myself, I'm like, God, what is this now? Where are you trying to say that this tailor knows Glacier and he's gonna link me up with her? So said. The, the tailor is Glacier Robinson's cousin, and he says, Glacier is looking for you. She wants to do a song with you. Wow. So I said, what is now? So he give me the number, give me her number, and I call her the next day, and we have a two-hour conversation. I've never spoken to anybody on the phone for two hours yet. We laugh, we cry, we, we celebrate, we pray in the one conversation. This is the first time me and her are talking, and now, She's almost like as close as you get to a sister that in my life. This is just about like six months ago, seven months ago, so and we are the closest. She's a guide for me. When I sent glory to God to her, she said, Wayne, let me explain something to you. This is from the chamber of God. 
you are going to minister to the nations. You are going to get testimonies from the old and the young. This song is going to heal. She said, she said, I'm not, I can't, I'm not even going to impose anything on you. I am leaving this to you and God because God has selected you for a purpose and it's not just the music. Just know, my brother, your purpose and your calling is much bigger. You are going to minister. And it, it was just, you know, like it's overwhelming. And then, again, that was just another thing to say, follow that voice. Yeah. Follow that voice listen, in your head. Listen and follow. Another instance of that is I was in my driveway and I was thinking, link the prime minister. I said, link the prime minister? Who links the prime minister? <laughs> But then I thought to myself, all right, let me pick up my phone. I did, oh, it's like, whoa, Andrew Holness gave me a number about eight, nine years ago. But obviously, as a prime minister, this number couldn't be working still. So I look on WhatsApp to try to find him. So I look and, and I don't see the, a picture beside the number. So I say, this is Wayne Marshall. What's up, boss? And then I get a response saying, how do I know that? And I said, well, it's ironic because my voice notes aren't working now but as soon as they're up i'm going to sing you a song and then he laughs and says i saw you in the in the in the yesterday's observer and i said that is exactly what i want to speak to you about it's a song that i did wow. you know and it's, just, it's glory to god it's just the spirit was telling me link the prime minister why i didn't even know i had a number for the prime minister but you did and i followed all of this is happening while you're nurturing your children yes and your wife and your marriage yes. and your other relationships Tell me about your children in a oh, minute. My children are awesome. There's Geomar, there is there is Jackson, and there is Atlas. Is Geomar the one who was on stage singing with yes, about two yes. or so years ago? Stupid Money, yes, 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 about four years ago. Oh, that long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stupid Money. Stupid Money. You wrote that? I wrote it, but I wrote it through him. I felt what he would feel, you know, because he's so talented. And what, what Geomar does is... He reassures me of my talent because I'm like, if I made these little boys, I must be something great myself. Oh, it's all three boys? Three boys. So just yes. tell me their ages. Three boys. Um, the, the youngest one is two. And then there is Jackson, there's Jackson who is five and, and Gio is 12. What is Gio doing now? Gio is at school in Miami now with so his mom. So you're making sure that he finishes school thing, right? Yes. Before he take off into the music thing. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. What yes, kind yes. of father are you? How do you describe yourself as a father? Well, I, I have evolved as a father. I feel like now I, I want to lead by example as opposed to opinion. So instead of the bag of talking, I want to lead by example. So if I say you're great and you can be anything you want to be, I have to be great and be anything I want to be before. And Tammy, if I said to her, what kind of husband is Wayne? What would she say? She said the best husband in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't say anything, I told you. <laughs> hey, Wayne Marshall, thank you so very much for sharing. Thank you. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you. And I hope you grow from strength to strength in this new part of the journey. Because it's Thank not you. that the journey has ended. You've just continuing. Absolutely. God bless you. Thank Wayne Marshall has been my guest. Uh, this has been Profile. Wow, interesting story. I believe you think so. And I hope it will help you perhaps with some changes that you might be considering. Walk good till next time. Good evening. Mm -hmm.